Let's talk about the three most important things to focus on early in Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis to keep your progression as smooth as possible. There is a lot of content in the game, and as you push through the story, you're just going to keep unlocking more and more and more things, and it's going to seem very easy to get distracted and feel overwhelmed and think you should be doing all of these things at once. And I think early in the game, there's really only a few things you need to be focusing on, and a lot of these things will get important later on. So let's talk about that. Obviously, you should be pushing through the story. That should be your top priority. Uh, again, as you push through, that's how you unlock everything. Uh, you get a lot of resources for it. You do gain some levels, and, and it, it kind of guides you through and introduces you to everything. And it's honestly a lot of fun. I've, I've been having a good time with the story. So push through the story as much as possible. Let these missions down here guide you. Sometimes it'll have you switch to like a crisis core or you know what I mean? It, it'll, it'll have you jump around a little bit, but try to follow these because these are important as well. But as far as what to specifically be focusing on, when you get to a point in the story where you feel like you're starting to hit a wall, that's where you're going to need to break away and start to do some other things to make your yourself stronger so that you can, excuse me, continue to push through the story. So one of those things is obviously going to be your character level. The higher your level, the higher your stats, right? It makes sense. Now, if you get to a point where your recommended power for a stage isn't high enough and you need to get stronger, you can come over here to the solo quest, the solo content, go to enhancement quest, training quest, and then this character EXP farm. Just work your way through it and farm the highest stage you can. The drops are pretty reasonable. I'm not even to the highest point yet. And the cool thing is once you clear a stage, there's a, there's a toggle here and you can set it to do times three. So it'll consume three times the energy but give you three times the resources. So just come in here and, and dump a bunch of energy in it. Get your levels up a, a little bit. Get your recommended power higher than it needs to be for where you're at in the story. So you can go through and continue to progress that way. Fairly, again, fairly straightforward. But this is one of the dungeons that you need to be focusing on. Whereas, again, there, there's a bunch of, of them in here. And then if you back out, you've got weapons, synthesis, premium. And then you've got battle tower. It's going to be very easy to feel like you should be doing all these things. So. You just got to keep it reined in a little bit. Getting your character level up is very important. Another thing is getting your weapon levels up. So if we come in here to our equipment, by the way, the recommended party and then the recommended, the best build seem to have been working really well for me. So I trust those. The AI in the game is really good too. The auto battle has been working really well for me as well. So uh, best equip and then whatever it equips, just start leveling up the, that gear. Now, if you've got a specific weapon you want to focus on, of course, do that. But generally, best equip seems to be pretty good. So if we if we open up one of the weapons, I think you have to hold it. It's a little bit clunky sometimes <laughs> navigating. You have to hold click it. And then if we go to enhance. Now, I'm at level 50, so I think I'm starting to need a new kind of resource to do some of this. But we can uncap level. And then we can also overboost rarity, where we're going to continue to, to add stars to it. So if it's purple and you overboost, it's going to get a fifth star and become gold. Then you overboost again, it gets a red star, and you can just continue to overboost. You do that with duplicate parts. So when you draw, if you pull the same weapon, you're going to get parts for it. And when you have enough parts, you can do it that way. You can also use cloud-specific weapon parts as you obtain those. And then again, the, the level upgrade. So in order to upgrade your weapons, you can come in here. I can't enhance it and I can't un uncap it right now, but you can click on a resource and it'll tell you everywhere you can get it. So premium quest level uncap, weapon quest level uncap from the shop and from the exchange and the exchange. And then you can click it and it'll, it should just take you straight to it. So when you're leveling up and trying to uh, overboost the rarity of your weapons, if there's a resource you don't have that you need, just click it and then click the dungeon that you need. It'll take you straight to the dungeon where you can farm it. And in our case, we're not quite strong enough yet to farm that. So I'm going to have to continue to put in some work on my levels. But you want to be showing attention to your weapons. Now, I don't think materia is quite as important right now. I think most of your energy should go into getting your weapons sorted out. And then I think as you progress a little bit later, when your weapons are more sorted out, I think materia is going to get a little bit more important to start leaning into. But in my experience, uh, even upgrading your materia, I don't have a lot going on to even upgrade my materia right now. So it's that seems like it's going to be a much slower, potentially later game focus. 
Uh, so for now, weapons. Get your weapons in order, and that's how you level up and increase the rarity of your weapons, all right? Just, just those dungeons. Now, the third thing that I think you need to be focusing on that I think is probably getting overlooked a lot is the growth. There are a lot of bonus stats and a lot of benefits to focusing on your character streams, okay? I just finished my whole first page, and then my second page. I think there's going to be several pages of this, but the second page is where things start to get interesting. Blade beam level up, cross slash level up, right? You've got your, your limit breaks and stuff in here, and there's lots of extra stats. And I've only done my first page, and you can see the bonuses that I'm getting over here. I'm, I'm getting a 350 HP, some bonus attack, magic attack. Just from coming in here and adding these, and you're going to be obtaining a lot of these pieces as you progress through rewards, but when you get to a point where that slows down, you can click this one and you see we need, I actually need to come in here and progress my tree a little bit more. We need healing pieces. Now, let's talk about how to obtain pieces aside from all of the pieces you're going to get for just progressing through the game. Back in the solo content tab, in the enhancement quest, in the, no, not weapons. That's where I'm going to get my nano cubes and stuff. It's in the training quest. You've got pieces. And then you've got pieces, specific piece dungeons, right? So power, magic, and healing. And that's what all the different colors are. Now, the pieces dungeon is going to drop, I believe, the same amount of all of them. The power piece dungeon is still going to drop all three of them. It's just going to drop more power pieces. Magic piece is still going to drop all three of them. It's just going to drop more magic pieces. Healing pieces is still going to drop all three. So if you feel like you are super low on one of them, you can focus a specific dungeon and kind of catch that specific piece up to the rest of them. Uh, if you feel like they're all relatively even right now or you're not super concerned with that, then you can just farm the peace dungeons. And even the fifth stage of the peace dungeons, you only need 35,500 power. So I, I mean a little bit more to farm it reliably. It's not really a hard dungeon to farm and it's so important. Okay, so that's probably where I'm about to put a lot of my effort today is I'm just going to grind pieces five for probably the whole day and get in here and really work on progressing the growth tree on my core three, which is Cloud, Tifa, and Aerith, all right? But but don't sleep on that growth tree. There, there are a lot of bonus stats to come from there, and just the first page is impactful. The second page is going to be huge, and I imagine it's just going to continue to go. I don't know how many pages there's going to be, uh, but very, very important. So grind your experience dungeon when you feel like you've hit a wall in the story mode to get a few levels ahead of the content. Focus on leveling up your weapons because that's where a lot of your strength is going to come from, obviously. And then again, do not sleep on that growth tree. Get in that, get in the peace dungeons, get those pieces up and work on getting your character's uh, growth trees, you know, filled in. And you'll notice a significant difference in what you're able to do. And then if you want to dabble in some other stuff, you'll be a little bit stronger and you'll be able to do that more easily. So uh, we'll we'll check back in soon as I progress a little bit further, maybe as I start to transition into the mid game a little bit and talk about how things evolve and what, what the new focuses should be. But I think as an early game player, this is probably what you should be focused on. Trying to do too many other things I think is going to slow you down. So hopefully this was helpful. If you've uh, got any other tips you want to drop in the comments, I would be interested in them. I know there's a lot of people that are much further than I am in the game. So if you've got anything you want to drop about what's to come, any kind of advice for me or anybody else, that would be dope. Other than that, I'm getting out of here. Hope it was helpful. See you guys later.